Hey, what's up guys, Mixoplex here. In today's video of Mix Academy, we're gonna be discussing everything that you can run into in this Sea of Thieves the moment you leave an outpost. Now, to get things started, let's go ahead and talk about the first thing straight out of the gate. Now, uh, if you guys enjoy this series, please let us know down in the comment section below through a comment or even a like. Definitely does help us out quite a bit. But to go ahead and get things started, we're gonna be talking about barrels or supplies. Now. For those who don't watch the live stream, supplies are key to anything in Sea of Thieves. Now you can see barrels listed here when you can get the option, uh, open option. Now, I'm not gonna go into specifics exactly, but anything and everything is useful, including earthworms, you know, any any type of bait. If you, you know, maybe wanna do a little bit of fishing, that bait is actually key. Now you can get this pretty much wherever you want, uh, bait especially, and you know, it, you can literally just get it yourself. But barrels should always be hit at an outpost. When you first spawn in, always get supplies. That should be the, the, literally like the first thing you do no matter what. And it should also just make your life a little bit easier. Having cannonballs and good food will make a hell of a difference uh, going forward in your Sea of Thieves adventures and something you should make like muscle memory uh, going forward. All right, so before we go ahead and set sail, we're gonna be taking a look at what we may or may not do. Now we could pick one of these uh, factions here if you want to work on a particular voyage uh, but in this video we're going to be discussing everything you may or may not encounter on the sea of thieves in your daily sessions so if you're looking to support yourself some ship cosmetics you can visit the shipwright which is located right next to the chest and you can filter through anything that you see here now anything here can be uh, bought with gold or can be bought with doubloons now doubloons is another currency you see on the top right which is given to you through uh, a few different items and mostly commendations, uh, completions actually. And as for gold, well, gold you can earn through anything from world events to voyages. Anything usually has a gold price to it, uh, which can be inflated with events or even emissary, but that's a huge thing we're not gonna go into just yet, but there's two different currencies. This which you can get just by playing the game. Gold you'll have to earn by selling things at an outpost. So we've discussed everything on the outpost relating to ship stuff. So let's go ahead and get ourselves onto the ship and get ourselves going. Now we're going to discuss a few different things here, uh, which may or may not be something that you already know. So let's go ahead and just take a look at it. So with the regions in Sea of Thieves, there happens to be four different regions. Now, some of which I personally favor the most. And then one of these is the Shores of Plenty. Now, Shores of Plenty is basically starting from up here all the way down to, I would say about Sailor's Not Stronghold and probably kind of cutting off around like North Star right here. So anything up here, I would say is probably in about Pick Room Palms. It's about the uh, the Shores of Plenty. Now, Shores of Plenty is just a beautiful area. You know, it's very bright, very blue water. Like it just looks like a good place to be. And it's probably one of the better places to have fights and or just to grind just because aesthetically it's it's appealing to the eye. And as for points of interest here, we have two different outposts uh, that we can take a look at, which is Sanctuary, which is a pretty good outpost of decent amount of supplies there. And my favorite Golden Sands, which is where we're at, located actually at the moment, uh, which is my favorite outpost for supplies because there's so many barrels. And if you get a good roll, definitely one of the best ones. Definitely, I would say if you're like a maybe a brig or a galleon, uh, definitely hit outpost up or uh, hit up uh, Golden Sands if you spawn there, and just enjoy the the supplies. It's hands down, probably one of the best. So this is the shores of plenty. Now we're gonna go ahead and go down south, and we're gonna be looking at the ancient isle. Now the ancient isles, I would say, starts around Discovery Ridge, all the way up to about Castaway Isle and goes to about Devil's Ridge, Ancient Spire, and all the way down south. Now the Ancient Isles has two different points of interest, uh, two different outposts, which is Plunder and Ancient. Now, uh, Plunder, I'd say is a fair, fairly decent outpost. Um, not so many barrels, but again, most of these outposts, if you get a good roll, can be really good. Others, not so much. It's kind of the reason why I like Golden so much, just because you get a nice little uh, mixed bag, I guess. There's so many, you tend to get something good. Ancient Spire is another uh, outpost as well, which I'm not a big fan of just because you have to climb up to the tavern, but it's still a decent outpost and allows you to travel to our next 
destination, the Devil's Roar. Now, the Devil's Roar was added as kind of like a volcanic area where it's, you know, dry on supplies and it's harsh to the environment and, you know, or harsh to you as a pirate in your ship with the, you know, volcanoes erupting everywhere. Well, this area will go from about all the way down south here to Ashen Reaches, all the way up here to Fetcher's Rest. Anything in this area is located, or, uh, it's pretty much the DR or the Devil's Roar. Uh, when there's volcanoes, you'll know you're in that area, so be careful. But if you're looking to start voyages, you need to go to Morrow's Peak Outpost as any voyage is located here has to be specific to the area. You can't pick up a random one uh, that happens to be, you know, located in the wilds or whatever. It has to have that red classic border here, allowing you to do an, uh, a voyage over in this area. And for our final region, we got ourselves the wilds. Now the wilds is probably the personally my least favorite uh, area actually, just because it's kind of annoying to fight in. Uh, it's, it's very dreary and not really like a, an appealing spot to the eye. But if you're looking to do some voyages, honestly, the, these aren't too bad because there's so many different islands, most of which are relatively small, allowing you to kind of bypass some of the bigger ones and kind of just focus on these small little islands, which you can burn through super quick. Now, as for points of interest, we have two different outposts here, which is Galleon's Grave and Daggertooth. Now, these are really close to each other. I mean, it's still a decent distance away from each other, but I mean, it's like a couple of minutes and you know, you can go to the another outpost. I'm, I don't know why they designed it like this, but they did. But regardless, these two outposts are the points of interest in the wilds. Again, probably my least favorite, but some people love the wilds just because it's got that look to it. And it, it is good for certain things. So one of the things you're probably going to encounter in Sea of Thieves is Reaper Marks. Now, Reaper Marks are, well, they're kind of a mixed thing. And uh, honestly, I think if you're relatively new, uh, these could get you jump started with a little bit of either doubloons or some coin in your pocket. Now, there's two different versions of these. There's one that is green and red. There's one that is solid gold. Now, the green and red one will give you doubloons, whereas the gold, straight gold one will give you... Uh, I think around 10,000 gold on a turn in. Now, these are located in shipwrecks. Now, shipwrecks are going to be also covered in this little bit. Here is they're located with seagulls. Now, seagulls are plentiful at shipwrecks, and shipwrecks, well, they can be a mixed bag for a few different reasons. I mean, for one, supplies, but also loot. They can contain some random loot from nothing to, you know, from total junk to having some really top tier loot not like top tier in the sense of like some of the best but something definitely worth it if you're relatively new so we're gonna go ahead and actually empty all of our supplies here we're gonna go ahead and throw down this right here we do have a sloop literally right next to us so we're gonna have to be careful as this also appears to be pretty low now holy crap we actually got pretty lucky there's a chest of sorrows in a reaper chest straight out of the gate into the crow's nest which i've never actually seen before that's uh in three years it's definitely a first for me as you see we also got a green little gem here now these barrels i highly recommend you take your time to get you know through them and just try to get everything you know i think a lot of the newer players don't go through these for supplies which is really for me the best part of uh shipwrecks they can be top tier and look we also got a villainous skull which is relatively about well, about 1100 or so maybe like 1300 for like an like on the high end i guess and we'll hit the rest of these barrels here and see if we get anything lucky but you guys pretty much will get the idea supplies are great here and allows you to also get battle meats which will give you regen as well which is pretty cool let's go and eat some of these bananas now you can actually eat food while you're underwater to give yourself HP, which is really nice. So if you want to stay here for an extended amount of time, uh, you basically just need to eat food of any kind and you uh, should be good. So let's go ahead and grab this. For the most part, we're looking pretty solid. Now, one of the best things they added in Sea of Thieves is these tridents. Now, these tridents 
we're not going to be covering in this video uh, but these are something i would highly suggest you take with you um, for for a lot of reasons uh, one of them being well they are relatively useful for new players and are good for pve encounters player versus environment encounters allowing you to kind of burn through uh captains uh anything honestly even good against pvp i mean it's not the greatest but uh definitely a tool you can use in your arsenal if you're looking to uh maybe get somebody off the ship or you're just looking to uh, i don't know maybe do something efficient in terms of a voyage so remember in sea of thieves the harpoon is one of the better additions they added to sea of thieves and it takes some getting used to try to aim just above what you're looking at here and you go ahead and snag this up put this right here and we're gonna leave that gem there for now as we're honestly not really looking to make gold on this account but you know let's see if we can grab it real fast all right so let's go ahead and turn this in now with the reaper mark in hand this will also show an indicator on the map now this is one of the biggest no-nos for new players. Remember, if you pick one of these chests up, whether it's the gold one or this one, if people are looking at the map and they see this moving, they're going to likely come after you just because they think you have loot uh, and or you might just have something. I mean, they basically it's think of it as like a player locator, essentially. And this chest moving gives people exactly an idea of where you're coming from and how to intercept you. So do keep this in mind. So where you turn this in at is the Reaper's hideout. Now, uh, you're going to talk to the Servant of Flame here on the southeast side, allowing you to sell the Reaper's Mark. Now, the Reaper's Mark and Bounty are the exclusive to this place. You can turn in anything else you want to at the Reaper hideout as well, if you happen to be, uh, say, a Reaper but in added to get added Golden Rep. But those particular chests uh, have to go there. Otherwise, no other vendor will take them at any other outpost. So if you happen to snag one of these up uh, on your travels, remember to always go here to sell them. So you just loaded in for the very first time and you see a skull in the sky or maybe a tornado. Well, if you don't know what those are, those are world events. Now, world events are locations or events that with a you know with the killing of a boss or doing a fleeter for example will net you a quite a bit of gold they're definitely worth doing and something you should get familiar with at some point uh but as a new player definitely check them out if you're looking to find to, you know something to do that's exciting uh but we're not going to go into great detail as to how to complete these as world events and how to do them efficiently is a video in and of itself and we're not going to cover that in this but definitely check out world events if you see them popped up in the sky as they can net you a decent amount of gold for little to no effort so emerging encounters are things that you encounter out in the world now these are going to take three different forms in the form of megalodons krakens and skelly ships now in this first clip you're going to see a megalodon now, megalodons are probably one of the most reliable when it comes to good food and also good loot and one of the ways we kind of recommend you tackle it is by simply inking your boat now, I wouldn't do this if you're near another crew, but one of the things we recommend here is just to anchor your boat and shoot cans as much as possible, as well as use your pistols and snipers to shoot the mag, as it does do damage. It does add up to something, but not as much as like a cannonball or even a trident. Now, when a mag does bite you, you can either decide to keep shooting it and hopefully it doesn't bite you, or you can get below deck and make sure you don't get knocked off the ship, but also allowing you to repair the boat relatively quickly. So when you finally defeated a Megalodon, they're going to drop a mixed bag of loot and also Megalodon meat. Now this meat is some of the best food in the game, allowing you to have both overheal and a full 100% heal as well. Now we're not going to talk about overheal in this, but note that cooked food is definitely great to have and Kraken meat and Megalodon meat are some of the best of which you can get. So with skeleton ships, well, they're going to spawn in one or two versions. You're either going to get the sloop or the galleon. Now, regardless of which one you get, do note that it is relatively easy to deal with. They're not that difficult. And one of the ways I would highly suggest you tackle it is, well, by raising your sails. If you're matching it full speed all the way down, it's a little bit more difficult and makes it harder for you to, you know, to lay into them, basically. And one of the ways uh, we do this is by raising sails and then just light into the cannon line as much as possible and hope you don't get shadow skeletons 
uh, especially during the nighttime. Now, one of the things you can also do, which I didn't learn until maybe three or four months ago, is you can blunder bomb the ship when they spawn, and well, you might just get lucky and hit a keg or two. Kegs on these ships almost result in an instant sink, so when they spawn, consider shooting a couple of blunder bombs from your cannons, and that might help you sink them just that much quicker. So after sinking the skelly ship in question, there's going to be some birds overlooking the water. Those are seagulls, which will signify where the loot is. They added this really a ways ago uh, to kind of help track loot uh, during the fleet event. But it allows you to track where exactly uh, the AI ships did sink and allows you to pick up the loot. Now, these boats tend to have kind of a mixed bag. They don't have high tier loot, but they tend to have a decent amount of loot. Uh, and they also come to one to two storage crates which are already filled with supplies. So if you're lucky, you can get like 60 cannonballs and a decent amount of food here. And just a mixed assortment of uh, loot in terms of chests, gems, stuff like that. Definitely worth hitting though, no matter what. If anything, just for the supplies. When a Kraken spawns, you're gonna see the entire oh, area near your boat turn black as that's the ink that's starting to emerge and a Kraken will pop out and tentacles will start to attack. Now. The quickest way to deal with the Kraken is just to full send all cannons on any tentacle you can find. Tridents help with this, guns help with this. Simply find a tentacle and shoot it, and eventually it'll let go of you and hopefully, you know, it'll disembark and kind of disengage, and then you'll eventually win. Now, this is a pretty straightforward emergent event. It's simple. Uh, there is one thing that you will have to kind of see and uh, visualize is, well, when you start to see wind coming from your character, no matter where you go, make sure you get below deck, as that is implying that the tentacle is going to suck you up and then it will do damage to you. If you let it grab you for too long, it will two-shot you. But that is the one mechanic you can do to kind of make sure that doesn't happen. But if it does, your teammates, if within harpoon range, can also harpoon you from it, but it's a little bit more difficult. You're better off literally just full sending on all all cannons on all tentacles and just getting rid of it as quick as possible now the kraken's loot is very mediocre probably the one of the worst at the moment you can get like foul skulls disgrace skulls but simply find a tentacle and go nuts with it if you do get wrapped uh from the kraken make sure you target the closest tentacle to the wrapped tentacle that's the sim the biggest advice i can give you if you find if you once you get wrapped find the the closest tentacle nearby get rid of it and it usually will let go relatively quickly now you you can collect the loot after every tentacle that has been uh, destroyed there's always going to be one to two pieces of loot plus the meat of the kraken so again it's not bad for food but the loot is fairly mediocre and i've never really had a good kraken so so this concludes the second episode of mix academy now the this is a passion project of mine in the form of videos of which I've always wanted to make when it comes to teaching you guys how to do PVE to PVP because we get always get those questions either in the comments or during the live streams. How do you do this this way or how do you do this that way? And I've always wanted to explain it, but it's always been difficult to show it during streams all the times. So I figured why not? We'll take all those thousand questions that we get in a week. Let's put them in a video format and we'll try to get them out to you as quick as possible. So you, for those who are both either existing players or new players that have just joined the Sea of Thieves can digest them in your own time and come back to them as reference for later down the line. So let me know down in the comment section below if there's anything you would like for me to cover in a form of a video or if you enjoyed this episode. Let me know as well with a like or a dislike and consider subscribing to the channel for more Mixed Academy videos as well as our highlights that we always do at least once a week. So thank you guys for the support and I will see you guys in the next one.